Hi guys, what we're gonna do in this video is cover how to run um, Cohen's D or uh, the standardized difference effect sizes based on independent samples. So this video is gonna cover independent T. There are several forms uh, of effect size for independent samples. And we're gonna start with the traditional one, uh, which is D for independent T. So I'm gonna flip over here and look at the code. And what happens is that's calculated by taking the mean minus for group one minus group two and divided that by the standard deviations pooled. And the pooled standard deviation is sort of a weighted average of the two different groups standard deviations. And then the formula for T is mean minus mean over the standard error pooled. If you wanna use this in moat and type it in directly, you would use d.independent.t. And so what I'm gonna do here is look at three outputs for uh, SPSS, SAS, and JASP. So I'm gonna start with JASP. Well, I'm gonna try. SAS is being persnickety, there we go. So this is the output in JASP for an independent samples t-test. And we're doing this from means. So we're gonna come down here and look at the descriptives. And this is where a lot of the action is gonna happen. So we're gonna do 17.75 and 23 is our two means. 17.75, 23. Everything, every line is required in moat. Uh, however, if you have two of them next to each other, you can do this or that. So I can enter the standard deviation or the standard error. I don't have to do both. If you enter something on the right side, it will automatically trump the left side. So that means if I enter something on the right side, uh, it will ignore the left. So I can, I have both here, so I can enter either one. So 3.3 or 2.16. And then I want to type in my two sample sizes, which in this case is a very small sample, so it's four and four. And then we're going to use 0.05 as alpha, or over this time let's mix it up and do 0.01. Okay. I'm going to hit calculate. I'm going to click on summary because that's where all the output is going to be. That effect size is an almost negative two, so make fake made up data. Right? Our confidence interval, our 99% confidence interval, because we entered an alpha of 0.01 is between negative four and 0.4. Because that confidence interval includes zero, we have included that interpretation here, which implies that that effect size is likely to be similar to zero because our confidence interval includes zero as an estimate. So even though this number would traditionally maybe be considered large, we should be a little suspicious about how wide this confidence interval is, probably because we only have four people in each sample. We're also gonna give you the summary statistics, so the mean standard deviation, standard error, and the confidence interval for that mean only uh, for each statistic, so that you could report those in APA style. And then the test statistic. So we're actually gonna calculate T for you as well. So T with six degrees of freedom is 2.66. Our P value is 0.04. And in this particular case, P is greater than alpha because 0.04 is greater than 0.01. And so we would say this was not significant. That interpretation will change if we change alpha, which would be cheating, but it will change. All the confidence intervals will change as well. But now if P is less than alpha, we'll get the interpretation that it would be significant. Let's look at the other two outputs to see where we would get our, those numbers from. In SAS, which gives you lots of output, we'd mainly be interested in these numbers here. So we would wanna know what's our mean our standard deviation or our standard error out here. So we would use those numbers to enter to calculate the effect size. So the nice thing about JASP is it actually includes the effect size for you, if you ask for it. And so we can match this and see, look, they're, they're very similar to each other. All right. Now, if I'm doing this in SPSS, most of what I'm going to need is actually in our group statistics box. So I can calculate in, mean, and standard deviation. And we would take all of that and type it over here. So very similar places to pull the alpha from, but you would enter your two sets of means, your standard deviation, and in. Let's compare that to a different statistic. So let's say instead that you're only working with T. So for some reason you forgot to calculate the descriptives, or you're working from someone else's uh, research outputs, maybe you're looking at their uh, publication, 
Now I will warn you that T is not a perfect representation, so the translation here, if I click on code, is 2 times T over the square root of n plus n minus 2. Um, and that doesn't perfectly translate to calculating it from means. So if you have the means, go with T from means. If you don't have the means, this will work for you though. So what we're going to do is, let's start with SPSS this time, as we take 2.66. And our degrees of freedom is 6. But that doesn't do me a whole lot of good. You can keep the negative. I have to have each sample size, which I know is 4 and 4. If you aren't sure, which and you only have the degrees of freedom, you can um, split it evenly and add 1 to each group. So since I only, if I only had this, I would say, okay, 6 divided by 2 is 3, uh, plus 1 on each side. Uh, because that'll end up working out the same in the formula. If the numbers are uneven, so you say you had 7, somehow make that add up to, um, uh, I would take that and say 1 group is 3, 1 group is 4, add 1 to each one, 4 and 5. Either way, the degrees of freedom for an independent test, remember, are n minus 2, so we just want to make sure that that maps on the same. But it would be helpful if you had the actual n values. I know I've read plenty of research, though, where that's not the easiest thing to find. Let's look at stas here. So if we only had t, t is here. It's kind of depending on which one you want to use. But our t value is the same. We have different um, degrees of freedom estimation based on um, corrections for unequal variances. Uh, but t is still 2.66, and that's how we'd enter that and we want to deal with our degrees of freedom or look up here and know it's 4 and 4. And for looking at JASP, the T values here. Okay. So click on this, click calculate, and see we aren't getting the exact same number. So earlier we got 1.88 and so this is just an approximation. So you should always try to use means if you have um, if you have the means. If you don't have the means, this is usually um, a fairly close approximation. All right, now let's try and see what delta is. So when you say that you're calculating delta, this is very similar to the traditional D. However, delta is actually um, a special type of D where we're going to take the control group minus an experimental group. So this is a very specific set of conditions where you have two different groups and one of them is considered control and one of them is considered experimental. And then you divide that by the standard deviation only for the control group. And so that is um, the main difference between that and independent T for means is that this is a pooled standard deviation between the two groups. So it's a weighted average. However, for delta, it's only a standard deviation for the control group. And so it's important to enter those in order. So this standard deviation for one is the tied to the control group. And so if we did that, so we had 17.75, 23. Go back to my output here. I'm going to use 3.3 and 2.16 from here. So we're assuming that this first group is our control group. 4 and 4. And now we're going to get 1.59. So this is actually a lower number because we're using the control group uh, as the standard deviation of dividing. So we've gotten everything from 1.59 to 1.88 to 2.17. So we're getting a range of possible plausible values here. But you still will get the t-test. Um, because the t-test will calculate based on this pooled standard deviation, or pooled standard error, sorry, um, and you'll get your two different summaries. So the only thing really changing between this page and independent t from means is the effect size calculation. One last one here, and that's g. g is a correction for d. So let's look at this. So here's our traditional d formula, and then here's Hedge's correction on that. And so it will actually do the exact same thing that this page does, but it applies the correction to the confidence interval. And so if I were looking at, let's say, 
SPSS's output, I would pull these numbers directly. So let's do that. 3.3, uh, 2.16, 4 and 4. And over here we get 1.64. So it was 1.88, now we're brought down to 1.64. So this is just a, a, a correction on that that brings it closer to zero usually, which we think um, helps deflate the small upward bias that you get for uh, D on the statistic. Okay. So that's how we would calculate everything from independent T, all the different options that you have if you had JAS, SPSS, or SAS.